morning and welcome to video lesson 3A for pre-cal. We are beginning um, a giant chunk of just review from the whole year. And so I can pull questions from any topic that we have covered. But of course, I'm going to focus on trig where we really uh, struggled. But that's kind of the main purpose of pre-cal right there. So I'm going to start with just talking about angles. Let's talk. Let's just deal very gently with angles. All righty. So if I have this angle, negative 4 pi over 3, and I need to, number one, sketch the angle in quote-unquote standard position, so that means it's between 0 to 360 degrees or 0 to 2 pi, the traditional circle, figure out what quadrant it is, and then determine one positive and one negative co-terminal angle. And a co-terminal angle is any angle that's occurring at the same position, but it has been moved by a whole circle. So you're literally adding and subtracting. 360 or 2 pi, just a circle. That's literally all you do. So, <clears throat> so we're going to take this angle and sketch our angle in standard position. Well, for our angle to be in standard position, so here's that first vocab, standard position, it needs to be between 0 and 360 degrees, or if we're in radians, 0 and 2 pi. So what are we in first and foremost, degrees or radians? Well, we're in radians. So I'm going to deal with 0 to 2 pi. So right now, negative 4 pi over 3 is absolutely not on the interval 0 to 2 pi because it's negative. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 pi. If it was way too big, if it was, you know, 6 pi, then I would subtract by 2 pi. So it just depends. If you're too small, you're going to add. If you're too big, you're going to subtract. So I'm going to <clears throat> add 2 pi. And when I add 2 pi, I end up with 2 pi over 3. Now I know some kids still struggle for fractions, so I'm going to showcase that for this question right here. If I'm adding 2 pi, I'm actually adding not 2 pi, but multiplied by 3 over 3. And where did I get that? The original denominator itself. So I'm really dealing with... 6 pi over 3. And those are numbers you can just get in your head, right? So if I was dealing with um, a pi over 4 value, then every time I would actually be adding 8 pi over 4. If I was dealing with an over 2, then I would be dealing with 4 pi over 2 each time, etc., etc. So those just become easy. You multiply your denominator by 2. And so if I take four away from six, I end up with positive two. So there's the same math for you. Just a reminder how we do that fraction. You can't just add two pi the way it is. So now I have two pi over three. Does two pi over three lie on the interval zero to two pi? Well, it's easier if I deal with just a fraction. Does two thirds lie between the value zero to two? Yes, it does. So two thirds lies in standard position. I can go ahead and graph it. So then I ask myself, okay, I've got my four quadrants, this is zero, this is one pi, and this is two pi. So where would two thirds lie? Well, it's not gonna lie at the halfway point. That's not far enough. It's gotta lie somewhere in between. So it's right about there, right? So we just think in terms of fractions, the top is a whole, the bottom is a whole, all together it's two holes. So just think in terms of our fractions. So I can get this out of the way now. And ta-da, there is my angle. Now I want you to notice what I did. There is, I did not draw my connecting line going this way. Why didn't I draw my connecting line going that way? Because that would be two pi over three. However, my answer, my answer is for negative four pi over three. So really technically we're going in this direction. So just be aware, uh, just know, you know, that all of those angles, technically that one line has an infinite number of angles attached to it. Anyway, continuing on, determine the quadrant in which the angle lies, boom. I know that that's quadrant two. Just a reminder, we go in counterclockwise positioning. It goes one, two, three, and four. So it's just a brief reminder. So we know we're in quadrant two. A positive and negative coterminal angle. Coterminal just means add or subtract a circle. That's it. That's all it means. So I'm going to take negative four pi over three and I'm going to add two pi. That was easy because we already did that at the beginning. So we have our positive coterminal angle. I'm going to subtract by two pi and we've got our negative coterminal angle. It's that simple. It really is. All right. 
Let's see what that looks like for a uh, angle given to us in degrees and not radians. So consider the angle 280 degrees. Sketch the angle in standard position. So we ask ourselves, is it an angle or a degree? Or is it a radian or a degree? It's a degree. So am I between 0 to 360 degrees or am I between 0 to 2 pi? I know I'm between 0 and 360. I'm already between 0 and 360, so I'm good to go. I don't have to adjust it. Go ahead and sketch it in standard position. I sketched it 0 to... To, three, to 280 does go in this direction, so we're good to go there. Determine which angle it lies. One, two, three, four. Ta-da! We're in angle. We're in quadrant four. And then adding one positive, one negative means add 360, subtract 360. Ta-da! That's it. Let's move on to the second topic. So there was topic one. Topic two, how do I convert from degrees to angles and angles to degrees? Every time I'm just multiplying by either pi over 180 or 180 over pi. The way I remember is I want to be able to cross out what I began with. So what did I begin with? I began with degrees. So to be able to cross it out, that means degrees has to be on bottom. So the only place left to put pi is on top. So I multiply that out get rid of the degrees, and I simplify because 127.5 over 180 simplifies down to 17 24 or I could have left it as 127.5 over 180, but it's smarter to simplify. Let's do it the other way around. So we did degrees to radians, now let's do radians to degrees. So again, I wanna multiply to be able to cross out. What was I starting with? I started with radians. So that means I need radians on bottom. What's the only thing left to do? bring 180 degrees on top, so I multiply, boom, bam, baby, seven times 180 divided by six is 210. Let's do it one more time. What if it's negative? Oh, Miss Jag, you still do the same exact thing? What? Okay, so I started with radians up top, so I want radians on bottom. 180 is the only thing left to fill out, so I fill that out, boom, negative 120 degrees. That's all we got, that's literally all I need you to review today.